Good morning, everyone from around the world. We are here at the ECOS uh, Northeast headquarters in uh, Parsippany, New Jersey. Uh, I'm Nick Katsouris, president of the Lukumi Make a Difference Foundation, and we're so happy to be uniting thousands of children in 30 countries around the world today on this virtual program. And then uh, where children will then, after the virtual program, do in-person good deeds all around the world. So we're so happy to, to be with you today. We have everyone here with us from ECOS and also all of the members who are riding our New York Lukumi Good Deed bus today. Say hello, everybody. Hi. Good morning. So, and thank you to ECOS for hosting us here today. We're very excited. We have a great program in line for you. Uh, but before we start, we have some uh, schools and children from around the world that have sent us some very short video clips that we want to play so that you can see what they're doing in their cities around the world. So let's take a quick look at what's going on with the Lukumi Foundation in cities around the world. Hi, my name is Farah and I'm a grade five student from Gander Elementary in Gander, Newfoundland. For Make a Difference Day, we will be visiting the Salvation Army Food Bank where we will be presenting a donation of non-perishable food items. We will also be visiting Orem's Bethesda Manor Seniors Home to deliver Halloween treats, bags, and care packages. We are also making caring cards to let them know we are thinking about them. Finally, we will be stopping at various locations in town to help with fall cleanup. Looking forward to an awesome Make a Difference Day here in Gander. Let's all make a difference with Lakumi! Hi, my name is Nikita. I'm Smitty. And I'm Adiwani. And we, we are, are with the Hellenic American, American Academy in Deerfield, Illinois. Our school is looking forward to participating in the Make a Difference Day with Lakumi. We are kicking off our efforts with a Good Deeds bus, which will stop at places including the Greek American Rehabilitation Care and Center, Feed My Starving Children, which we will hand pack nutritious meals. We're also raising more than five hundred dollars for Phila Heart for Kids to purchase more clothes for at-risk children in our community. Join, Join us, us in making, making a difference. Namaste, everyone. We are from Limbus in North India. For making a difference with Lakhmi Day, our kids are doing diya decoration. Hum diya saja rahe hain. Hum diya saja rahe hain. And we will sell those diyas and whatever fund we raise will be donated to needy people. Thank you. Thank you. Hello from Institute of Sankar Pafara in Como, Italy. We are donating dog and cat food to our local shelter. That were now some time ago. Our project is called Together for the Puppies. Let's all make a difference with Okumi. Hello, my name is Adriana Hansen, and for Make a Difference Day in South Florida, we are filling up treat bags for the special needs and doing a beach cleanup. Let's all make a difference with Lukumi. I'm Stella, and I'm here to help with the Lukumi Good Deed bus. Today, we started off at Karen's Florist, and we had sunflowers and um, leaves set up for us, and we got to put that all together into a vase. And then we got to pick two flowers of our choice and put them in there. And later today, we are going to give them to the Senior Center to give them joy. Hi, my name is Alex Ayers. And after we did the flower arranging class at Karen's Forest, we came to Wolf Track and we got to check out the uh, theater for performing arts here. But we got backstage access and we got to go on the stage, see what the performers get ready. And then after we had lunch where we wrote letters for the families of 9-11 and she two patients. And today after we went to Wolf Cap, we are going to Senior Center and we're going to give our flowers to the seniors and bring joy to them. Hi. Hola. In our language. Um, we are the um, La Academia Inmaculada Concepcion um, from Puerto Rico. Um, my name is Ian. My name is Mariela. My name is Julian. Right. Good deeds for Inmaculada Concepcion. First, we are we're trying some random acts of kindness. For example, hold the door for people behind us and volunteer in our community. Our first project is Feed the Homeless in Mayagüez. Donate food every weekend. Our local church feeds more than 400 homeless in our community. Our school is going to donate the food and supplies they need to feed them during the month of October. 
doing this good need will help us focus our thoughts outward towards others. By performing this particular good deed, we hope to have a positive effect on their health. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, what what great videos. Thank you to all the children around the world and all the schools for, for doing that. And that's just a sampling of what's going on today and what's been going on all week uh, because it's really been make a difference with Lugumi Week. So thank you all for participating. Um, I'd like now to introduce you to a, a wonderful friend and supporter of the Lugumi Foundation, uh, Ava Tsapitsaris who is on our Lukumi Kids Club board. She's been participating as a member of the Lukumi Foundation for over a decade. And now she is a student at New York University. Um, Ava, we're so happy to have you with us virtually. I know that you would be with us here in person at ECOS, but you have a very busy day today. Um, Ava is nominated for an Emmy Award for her work with Teen Kids News. So Ava, congratulations and welcome. Good morning, Nick. Thank you so much. I would definitely be there in person. Oh, the Kumi Foundation, yes, has been such an amazing part of my life for over a decade. And I'm so proud of this new generation of Lukumi kids all over the world. Over 130,000 kids are now involved with the foundation. And after seeing those videos, I'm so inspired. Well, Ava, you've been inspiring us for a long time. And um, we wish you well today. And uh, And yes, you know, it's, it's so great to see so many children in, in so many countries around the world. Uh, and then we have our Lukumi Good Deed buses. We've already had buses this week in, uh, in Virginia, Washington, D.C., in Chicago. Uh, today we have two buses in Gander, Newfoundland, Canada. Uh, we're planning buses in Puerto Rico, uh, Lake Como, Greece, and other cities around the world. And today, this great group here is on our New, uh, our New York Lukumi Good Deed bus. And we are going to be doing a wonderful day here at ECOS, where they are going to give us a tour of their facility um, and, and some other great things. Uh, Ava, what else, what else did, did you hear we have in store for today? I heard we are also speaking to Anthula, who's going to talk to us about our work with the 9-11 letters. Yes. So as you know, we have a program called Never Forget Letters, where we write letters for families who lost loved ones on 9-11. And Abdullah, are you with us? I am. Okay, we, uh, there you are. Where are you? Uh, Hi. Hey, uh, it's so great to see you, Abdullah. Abdullah is a dear friend. And Abdullah, we wanted to bring you on today uh, first to tell you that we have collected over 1,000 Never Forget Letters that we are going to be distributing uh, down at the 9-11 Memorial at St. Nicholas uh, Greek Orthodox Church later today for families who lost loved ones on 9-11. And we wanted you to come on just to, to talk about a little bit about your story and, and what these letters mean that these kids have written. I can't tell you how wonderful it is what you're doing. The entire um, mission behind the Lukumi Foundation is just so inspiring and so wonderful. I, I love watching those videos of the kids and all their good deeds that they've done. Because, you know, at the end of the day, it it really is about the kids. The kids are our future. Um, I hate to sound cliche. Um, so everyone, I lost my brother, John Katsimatidis on September 11th. It was an absolutely horrific and awful um, experience. I miss my brother every single day. He was a wonderful, fun-loving, goofy kind of guy um, that really touched the lives and hearts of so many people. And I think that I'm really reminded of his spirit by what the Lukumi Foundation is doing. These Never Forget Letters really touch me in a way that you know remind me of my brother and the things that he would do for people to comfort them and uh, to make them feel loved. Um, so I, I read a couple of the letters and I was brought to tears simply because I think that it's so important for the younger generations to become aware of what um, happened 20 years ago. Some of you were never even born, right? So it's really important to kind of remind you all of what happened and through the process of you sending letters to these family members, it helps you to learn and to understand and then 
hopefully to never forget and to remind the rest of the world to never forget. I saw the uh, mailbox. I think that's a, an incredible idea, Nick. And I know the folks in Gander were really incredible in the aftermath of September 11th. And uh, I, I love the, the the way you have that. Um, I hope you can get those mailboxes in other cities, um, particularly in New York. Um, Listening to you today, Abdullah, they're all logged in and they're, they're there. As, as you know, we showed the picture just now. Uh, we brought a delegation up to Gander in May. Um, Kristen is here with us today, and Gary and Eileen, and uh, Judy Abrams, uh, who's at home today. But we all went up and we launched the, the first Lukumi Foundation Never Forget Letter mailbox, decorated with original artwork by the local students. So we are looking to do these in other cities. Um, and this year we had a thousand letters. Next year, let's let's get five thousand letters. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you so much, boys and girls. Have a wonderful day. Enjoy your trip today, um, and uh, continue to do good things and continue to touch the hearts and minds of people around you. It's it's really wonderful, and that's what will remain: your kindness and uh, your love of um, service and people. That's what's important. Thank you, Antula. Have a great day, and we'll talk soon. Bye-bye, guys. Bye. Um, Ava, it is now your turn. Um, Ava is going to be hosting a wonderful panel for us today uh, called Making a Difference for Things That You Are Passionate About. And we have three wonderful panelists. Ava, take it away. Hi, so I'd love to welcome our amazing panelists. Just like Nick said, we have Justin in from California. We have Daniela live at Ecos with our amazing group. And we also have Arsh in from Illinois. I would like to invite you guys now to just tell me a little bit about yourselves and give our uh, group here on Zoom an understanding of what makes you guys passionate about making a difference. Arsh first. Hi, my name is Arsh Pell and I'm 13 years old. My project started out when I was younger, exploring new hobbies to do. Art and drawing really caught my attention. So from there on, I kept on practicing until I got better. For my eighth birthday, I got art supplies and I started learning new techniques. I then started to sell my paintings and with the funds, I donate to different charities, such as St. Jude Research Hospital, Make-A-Wish Foundation, Compass of Care, etc. So far, I have raised over $16,000 to different charities. That's amazing, Arsh. Justin, why don't you give us a quick little summary about your project as well? Oh, hi, my name is Justin Sather, and I'm 12 years old, almost 13. And I live in... San Diego and my project is I'm trying to protect the rainforest in Ecuador and the oceans and so far I've protected 78 acres of rainforest in Ecuador and I have gotten a thousand pounds out of the ocean using the interceptor boat. Amazing and I can't wait to talk to you about that more. Now we have Daniela, who's live in person. Daniela, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and a quick summary on your project? Hello, my name is Daniela Foliano, and I am a junior at the School of Holy Child in Rye, New York. This summer, I hosted a golf outing at Leewood Golf Club, and the proceeds went towards two very important causes for me. One being St. Jude, where we funded for a St. Jude treatment room, which allowed patients to have access to both their life-saving treatments and their, um, and their studies. And then the other went towards funding Lukomi programming at a school in Lake Como, Italy, the San Carlos Royal School. And that was a very important charity for me, being that I am Italian, and also that from joining Lukomi, I feel like that I've grown significantly as a person. So I want to give more children the opportunity to make a difference. I'm also a leader at the Pediatric Cancer Club in my school. And for that, we make care packages. We have an annual car wash where we donate to St. Jude's, and we just make um, cards for patients. And I'm also the leader of the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society team at my school. And really just making a difference for me is very important. And I'm so grateful that I've been able to join the Leukemi organization because I've been given an array of opportunities to make a difference. 
Thank you so much, Daniela. And I was at that golf outing, so I can't wait to talk about it more and how impactful the event was and what an amazing job Daniela did. So let's start with Justin. Justin, why don't you tell us about what's most meaningful for you about your project? It's probably um, that one idea can change the world and I want to like change the world because one idea can change the wor world as long as it's just picking up one piece of trash on the floor, it can change the world. And um, I like this is most meaningful because I started my project um, on this book called What to Do with an Idea. And after reading that book, I learned that I could have my own idea of protecting the frogs because they were going extinct. And then now my idea has grown into protecting the rainforest and waterways. Thank you, Justin. That's amazing. Um, Arsh, why don't you tell us what is most meaningful for you about your project? Um, I would probably say that um, I'm getting to help um, the community through my art, and um, I'm getting to help the elderly from art lessons. And in the future, I plan on helping younger kids with art lessons and making it more available for them. That's an amazing goal, Arsh. Daniela, what is most meaningful for you about your project? I would say just that I could bring people together, whether that's through the golf batting or the club I have at school. It's just very exciting to see people have the same passion for these two causes, for causes that I'm very passionate about as well. And just bringing people together for such like positive means. And it's really just very motivating. And I look forward to doing more acts of service in the future. Thank you, Daniela. Arsh, why don't you tell us how you were inspired to start making a difference through your project? Um, when I was younger, I used to go um, uh, with my mom to her work. She used to work at a nursing home. And when I used to go with her, I used to, you know, play with the residents and just hang out with them and talk to them. And, you know, that really made them smile and it, you know, made me feel good inside. So um, with that thought in my head and um, thinking about what I should do with my the money that I made from selling my paintings, I thought about donating it. So that really helped me to go towards donating money and helping the community. Thank you, Arsh. Justin, how about you? How were you inspired to start making a difference through your project? I was uh, first inspired by the book. And then I after I have had my project for a pretty long time, like after I've gotten older, I realized that I learned two facts about the one about the rainforest and one about the polluting of the ocean. And I learned that almost half of the world's rainforests have been destroyed and they could be destroyed in a hundred years. So that's why I started to work on the rainforests and protecting land because the rainforests are one of the most places where frogs live and but frogs do live everywhere except antarctica but like all the different types and like colorful ones live there and i didn't want all just all animals and i didn't want the rainforest just to disappear and then i also got to meet dr jane goodall and she told me that by 2050, there's going to be more plastic in the ocean than fish if people don't stop polluting. So uh, she kind of told me and inspired me to start working on plastic pollution. Wow, Justin, that's amazing how you were able to have a conversation with someone about your goals and your interests and they were able to inspire you. And that's a common theme here we see with our panelists. They're able to draw inspiration from others and then bring it into their own projects to make their own unique difference. My next question for Daniela, well, how do you measure the impact of your project? I think just the impact, whether it's a small act or a big act, it has the same almost impact. I think no matter the act of kindness you do, it's going to have a very positive impact. And I think that's very something very important for children to know that it doesn't have to be the biggest thing in the world. You know, I volunteered at a soup kitchen and I hosted a golf outing and I think they both had a very positive impact. 
and I think it's important not to like to not not to denounce your actions, but to rather acknowledge them so that you could continue on making a difference in the future. Amazing. Arsh, how do you measure the impact of your project? Do you set goals for a certain number of paintings that you want to sell? Um, usually I just see that kids, you know, that uh want to kind of like be like me and, you know, do something good, uh, good do a good deed in their life. Um, you know, they can use their time and their talents and, you know, just do something small, something, some act of kindness that uh can, you know, help the world. Thank you, Arsh. Justin, how do you measure the impact of your project? Um, I uh, measure like acres of land. Like I have uh, these like frog thermometers, like every acre of land, like you have to, I color it in. So, and there's all a bunch of different types I have. So <clears throat> I also measure with, I have a GoFundMe and a million letter campaign if you write a letter it can uh it's three dollars for the rainforest which i have like all of them measured and little frogs so yeah and i've also uh like have i've collect i like remember like what how much pounds and i like write it write it down and then like after doing it I have like a sign that's like 1,000 pounds like yeah I have it right here so it's like oh uh, 1,000 pounds and then like uh I'm working with pen pals in Africa and then like they would hold up a sign saying like 1,000 100 and we would go back and forth collecting. That's amazing, Justin. I know you have a goal that you've saved already 78 acres of land and your goal is to save 100 acres of land by November 5th. So I think that's a really impressive goal to share with the group. And maybe you can tell us a little bit about how you save the land. Um, November 5th, I do want 100 acres by November 5th because that is my 13th birthday. So I save the land by getting like donations and I work with a group called Reserva and I so you get to buy the land and then you protect it so no miners or um people can just walk in and cut it down because right now like they're the rainforests aren't really owned by anyone so people can like go and walk in and like either like chop the trees down and stuff but <laughs> but but we want uh to uh protect them so people can just go and walk in thank you justin for letting us know about that and that's such an impressive goal we are so proud of you for your work Our next question for the group is what piece of advice would you give to someone else who is looking to get involved in a good deed project? Arsh, if you would like to tell us your thoughts on that. You know, if you want to do a good deed project, do something you're passionate about. And as I said, use your time, your talent, just do something good. Something it, it can be something small, just something, some act of kindness that uh, in the future would help change the world. That's an amazing perspective. Daniela, what piece of advice would you give to someone else who was looking to get involved in a good deed project? I completely resonate with what Arsh said. I think that the first step is really to find out what you're passionate about. And for me, that's like mostly just helping out children battling cancer. And then after that, just really just brainstorming. It doesn't have to be the biggest act in the world. Every act makes a difference. And yeah, I think it's just such a rewarding thing to do on both the recipient and the person doing it and has so many benefits and really just hope everyone makes a difference and yeah. Justin, how do you give, how would you give someone a piece of advice who's looking to get involved in a good deed project? I would probably say, uh, why idea can change the world? You should start off small, uh, be brave and stay determined. <clears throat> Have a growth mindset, which just means even if though you fail, just say you can't do it yet, but you are going to succeed. And be brave, stay determined, 
and change the world. Thank you, Justin. Those are some great um, things to keep in mind when starting your own Good Deed project. All of our panelists, they have different projects in different areas, but the one thing that unites them is that they enjoy collaboration and they enjoy bringing others into their project because like the Lakumi Foundation has instilled in me and the 130,000 other children across the world is that together we can make a difference. Nick, I'm passing it back over to you. Thank you so much for allowing me to interview these panelists. Ava, thank you. Let's have a big round of applause for those great panelists. Ava, now I know why you're nominated for an Emmy Award. You were terrific. And uh, all three of uh, the, the children that spoke, uh, the young adults that spoke, I know you all, and I'm just bowled over again and so impressed with everything that you're doing, just listening to you. So, And you're right, uh, start small and you can change the world uh, with your passion and with the purpose that you find in life. And speaking of purpose, um, it is now my honor to turn it over to our first guest speaker, uh, who is with us from London today. Uh, she is from Miami, but she's in London today, planning the next World Happiness Summit. Uh, Karen Guggenheim was our honoree earlier this year at the Lagumi Make a Difference Awards. She is president and founder of Wohasu and the producer of the World Happiness Summit. Um, I was so honored to be invited to speak. Uh, Chef Maria Loy had called me earlier in the year to speak with her at, uh, at the World Happiness Summit. And then I met with Karen and Karen invited me to come over. Um, Karen, it's such an honor to have you with us today. And um, how appropriate because the, the March World Happiness Summit is all about purpose. Uh, so welcome, Karen, and thank you for being with us today. Thank you so much, Nick. And it's a pleasure to be here with all of you amazing people and all the children um, around the world who are listening and participating and leading these incredible projects this, just to learn about these three were amazing mm -hmm. that uh, that that you have all been uh, so passionate about. And I, that resonates greatly with me, Nick, like you mentioned, because um, I live my why also and my purpose and I'm very passionate about my work. And um, as we all know here, Sometimes it's not easy to um, and to find the time, and sometimes it's it's challenging with all the uh, work that that the school work and chores that that all the children are doing. But to decide to invest time and your energy in doing the work is amazing. And something that I want to say about purpose is that it's it's uh, it's the most visible part of meaning. So when we have meaning in our lives, we get to be healthier and also happier. And so meaning has uh, has three components. It's coherent, significance, and purpose. And, and so purpose is the most vis vis visible part. It's the part that gets us to act. It's the motivator. And I can see um, so many people here from the kids and the young adults and, and you, Nick, we've talked about this, how you're living your purpose and seeing this amazing um, drive and goal in your life. And so um, it's uh, I'm very proud of, of all of you. I know that um, how good it feels when you're doing these good deeds and how kindness spreads. And the wonderful thing about these things is that it not only feels good on the uh, on the receiver, but also on the giver. So we have something called an, an altruism loop. So when we do good for others, we actually feel good. Humans are really hardwired to feel good when they do good for other people. So um, the whole mission be behind Lokumi and uh, making in make, dedicating to good deeds is amazing and also gives you a sense of agency and power that you can make a positive difference in the world. And that's just um, just very, very beautiful. And let's remember that when we do something good, it ripples out. It ripples out to people way beyond just the ones receiving it, but to the families and the communities. And so you all are making an amazing impact beyond just the people that you directly see, but it also ripples out to so many more. So that is really wonderful. Um, 
I am really proud of you and I wish you uh, a lot of success in your projects. And I, I am just uh, in awe of how you are changing the world and the world is, is good. The world is good because you are in it and you are making it so. So thank you so much for all the work that you do. And we're very happy and proud to partner with you. Um, the World Happiness Summit and Lukumi Foundation and all of you. So thank you. Karen, thank you for those uh, wonderful, inspiring words. Um, you know, you inspire people all over the world and you've inspired everyone today. Um, if you could just tell us a little bit about Wahasu and the World Happiness Summit and also tell everyone how they could get involved, either if they want to attend virtually or, or in person, because uh, I know you're there planning all, all the wonderful things for March right now. Yes. So the next summit will be March uh, 19th and 20th in, in London. And March 20th is the United Nations International Day of Happiness. So we will celebrate it here. Um, and what we do with the World Happiness Summit is that we gather the world's leading experts in the science behind happiness and well-being. So it's the scientists and also practitioners. So practitioners like yourself, Nick who have been putting this, uh, this science into practice. And we gather a, a global audience. And so some will be in person, around 1,000 people, at the Queen Elizabeth Hall here in the South Bank Center, just uh, a few steps away from the London Eye on the river. And people can get their ticket uh, on worldhappinesssummit.com. And very shortly, we will also be launching our virtual tickets. So for those who can't come in person, we'll also be able to, to participate and to see what it is that, that we're doing. Um, we launched the Como Wellbeing Manifesto at the summit this uh, March in, in Lake Como. And if you'd like to take a look at that, it's also on our website. And so that's a call to bring, um, to really make well-being first. In, in our personal lives, in education, in, in uh, work, and also um, in government policy. So we want to uh, bring this conversation to as many people as possible and promote a science-based um, movement for, uh, for well-being. And so our goal is also to put... Um, to put well-being into country policy so that we can go beyond GDP to measure country success. So these good deeds that you're doing in education and um, kindness and sustainability and all these things, we believe should also be quantified and brought in as we measure a country's and society's success and peace and collaboration um, are also terribly important because we know that the number one thing that uh, has the biggest impact on our happiness are positive relationships. So that's from Harvard's uh, longest longitudinal study on happiness 85 years and going. It's really about people and it's about relationships. And that's something we can do something about. So sometimes we don't know how to feel happier and uh, one of the ways to do that is through the elements of well, the elements of well-being. And so relationships is one of them. Community, investing in your community, which you all do that, is another way to feel happier, taking care of your physical health. We know that from Maria Loy, how, how important food and nutrition is. Um, and then also uh, connecting with your purpose. People who have a sense of purpose are happier and healthier. And being mindful, being mindful of, of yourself, of other people, of the environment is also really important uh, in to, to increase, increasing your, your happiness and your sense of well-being. Well, Karen, congratulations on all the amazing work that you're doing, inspiring and uniting all these people around the world. You know, when I was at the Happiness Summit in March, I had a smile for four days um, and it was a, a perfect time for me to be there because uh, as you know, I made a transition in my career mm -hmm. this year and it was just a perfect time. And, uh, you know, well, congratulations on what you're doing. And um, we look forward to, uh, to seeing you again and, and wishing you all the best with the planning in London. 
Thank you very much. And good luck to all of you with your good deeds. And it's amazing. And again, you you inspire me. So thank you so much um, for this jolt of inspiration as I do my work. So thank you so much. Thank you, Nick. Before you go, Karen, we have a uh, someone who wants to say hello to you. We have a special visitor here. Okay. <laughs> no, you got to come in the camera this way. Come. <laughs> yeah. Lukumi Hi here. there. Oh, yeah. How are you? Lukumi came to say hello to everybody all around the world. So we wanted you to make sure that you saw Lukumi before you. Signed. Wait, let me take a let me take a screenshot of Lukumi so I can have. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, Lukumi. Take care, everyone. Thank you Thank so you, much. Karen. Be well. Take care. Bye. -bye. Take care. Bye -bye. And thank you, Lukumi. Lukumi, you want to say hello to everyone here at Ecos <laughs> and around the world. <laughs> so um, it now is my uh, my pleasure to introduce another amazing speaker. Her name is Jenna Arkin. She is the Chief Innovation Officer here at Ecos. Um, she is uh, from the West Coast right now. Uh, a little early there, but welcome, Jenna. Very nice to see you again, because you hosted our Good Deed of the Month Zoom last year uh, with Justin Sather in California. That was a wonderful uh, program that you did for us. So thank you. Welcome, Jenna. Nice to see you. Nice to see you guys. Good morning from California. I'm so glad to see you all are sitting in our beautiful climate positive factory in New Jersey. And uh, those of you joining us virtually as well, good morning. So I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about what it means to be a green chemist. So let me uh, share and I'll get going here. So a little bit about green chemistry. First, I wanted to give you guys a little sneak peek. Um, I know you're sitting in the factory for most of you, um, but also a little bit about who we are. So I'm gonna show you a little video. Hopefully the sound works. <laughs> Let's try the tomatoes. You wanna try the tomatoes? Let's try the tomatoes. What if everyone believed that the power of one could change the world? What if everyone could afford a greener living environment? What if taking care of our planet started with simple acts at home? What if you could feel safer about everything you put on and around your family? What if cleaning products for moms were made by moms? Ecos believes we can all act as a force for good, starting with small acts at home to build a cleaner future. Safer, sustainable cleaning products for all. Ecos. All right, so we call that our brand echo, and we really love the uh, focus on small acts and how it can actually make a big difference. And I'm a mom myself, and it's really awesome to be able to make cleaning products that help our next generation. And fun fact, that really cute little girl washing the dog, that's actually my daughter in the video. So we do uh, really keep it family around here. So what we're going to learn today, first, I'm going to tell you, what does it mean to be a green chemist? What is innovation, which is what I work in? What does climate change mean? I think a lot of people understand the basics, but there's always a new way to think about it. So I'm gonna share a little bit about how I think about climate change and also how you can help most importantly. So what is a green chemist? A few things that our green chemists do here at Eco. So I know you guys have the opportunity to walk in the front door and see our labs. The first thing that we do is we test our soap and make sure it's been made exactly right. So sometimes it's a little trickier as a green chemist because our materials have natural variants. So with that natural variance, we want to make every bottle of Ecos feel exactly the same. And that can be challenging sometimes. So our expert chemists really work hard to make sure that the quality is the same for every single bottle. We also look for ways to reduce materials. So sometimes we can use a smarter chemical that can do two things instead of one, and then we can use less chemicals. One of my favorite examples is in our toilet bowl cleaner, we use cedar wood. It smells great, but it actually is a natural antifungal as well. So one material doing two things is a really cool way to reduce the amount of things you put into a product, and that reduces its carbon footprint. 
We also love to try out new chemicals. Anything that comes through the door is, is a new chemical, and we're very excited to see all kinds of innovation throughout the world, people coming up with new ways to use different materials that come from plants that we've never seen before. So we love to test out new things. And we also love to look for materials that can be regrown. I think that's really at the heart of green chemistry and why it's called green chemistry or where that came from is that these are chemistries that can be regrown. So imagine if you can regrow a coconut tree, then you can use that coconut oil to make cleaners and it can be grown again and again and again. And that makes it regenerative. So we can regrow it and know that we're not taking away from Earth's precious resources. And we also, always test our chemicals for safety. That's a fun part of the job, making sure that everything works well and that it's safe for hands, hypoallergenic, gentle. That's one of the most important things we do as well. And most, uh, last but not least, is we experiment. We have fun with new ideas. I know you guys just saw Justin talk about his fraud frog project. I actually had the awesome opportunity to host Justin in the labs here in Cyprus, and we made some really fun soap together and got to experiment with some new ideas. So it's great to see him out there continuing his great work. So what makes a product green? Uh, there's a lot of different ways to think about this. Here's some of the simple things that I think about. We just talked about renewable. So if you can use plants uh, for materials, you can always grow more. That's a really great way to make something green. Also compact. Smaller products save space. And that's important because when you're shipping them around the country to the stores that they go in, that means there's less fuel use. Less fuel is less carbon. So making something compact is a really smart way to make it green. Also, we don't use dyes in our products. So dyes are kind of like bullies for nature. Most of them bioaccumulate, meaning they do not biodegrade. They never go away. So that's why it's really important for us at Ecos to use no dyes. The next thing is we think about odor. We use natural natural and uh, natural essential oils and natural fragrances, not just strong scent. So if you walk down the cleaning aisle at a, a grocery store, you might get a headache because the scents are so strong. And those are actually VOCs or volatile organic compounds. And those can cause a lot of different negative health impacts. But the idea is Cleaning shouldn't smell overpowering. It should smell like nature. And that's why we use natural fragrances and essential oils in our products. We also think green chemistry is about improving. You can never really be done. I uh, always tell our chemists here at Ecos, pencils never down, beakers never empty. And that's important because as soon as we come up with an idea, we got to think about what's next. Mm -hmm. So uh, green chemistry moves really quickly and we have to make sure to stay at the forefront of it. And also the last but not least, they have to be safer and they have to work well. So it's important a product is safe and it's also important it does what it's supposed to do. Otherwise it just ends up in the landfill if it's a useless product. So next, what is innovation? I think innovation is creating new ideas, products and ways to solve problems with new ideas. So sometimes ideas aren't new, but they're two ideas that exist that come together in a new way. And that's innovation. And it really can be anything. And it's awesome to see young, bright minds also thinking about ways to solve problems and everybody can participate in innovation. So it can be inventions, it can be improvements or creativity. I'm going to show you my latest invention that I'm most proud of that we just got a patent on, a US patent, and that is our laundry sheets. So what are laundry sheets? The first thing is we have to start with the problem. The problem is what do we do about all the plastic that it doesn't get recycled and ends up in the ocean? So the way that we solve this was thinking about why do we need plastic? And the answer is not what you think. The answer is that our products, our traditional products have water, but what if we took out 100% of the water? It turns out if you take out 100% of the water, you can also take out 100% of the plastic. So this is laundry detergent. Every sheet is one load. It kind of has the texture of a bubble gum. When you throw it in water, it immediately dissolves and it turns into detergent. And while using waterless, it comes in a paper box. So no more plastic. And that's one way that we're thinking about solving for plastic at Ecos. So you'll see a lot more inventions coming out in this space for us. Um, it's something we're really passionate about and we know that every small act can make a difference. So this is our latest way to take plastic out. 
a little bit about climate change before we wrap up and how we think about it. So the way to think about climate change is maybe to think about why it matters. So here's three things that we think about and why it matters. First, we all know warmer temperatures. So our atmosphere is heating up because of greenhouse gases. If any of you guys have ever had the fun uh, opportunity to go into a greenhouse, you'll know it's quite warm. And a real greenhouse is trapping the energy from the sun and heating up the inside. And that's really what's happening with climate change. These greenhouse gases, mostly CO2 that we talk about, it's trapping our warm air. And so our atmosphere does not have the ability to cool it down or to maintain its temperature. And it's getting worse and worse every year because of our emissions and greenhouse gases. The uh, next thing that happens is that ice is starting to melt. And so when the oceans get warmer, sea levels are gonna rise, habitats are being destroyed. And the other thing is uh, some uh, areas are gonna be at risk of being underwater. So as oceans rise, we're gonna lose communities that will never get back. And also we're gonna lose habitats like polar bears, they hunt on ice. And if they can no longer hunt on ice, uh, we're destroying their habitat. So that's why one key concern. And the other thing, and I think we can all think about a time that we've recently been impacted is extreme weather. And extreme weather is crazy because it damages things. It can flood our streets. It makes it hard to play outside. And so we're seeing extreme weather from hurricanes when they shouldn't happen. We even had a hurricane here in California, which is absolutely crazy. Uh, lots of fires that destroy habitats. And that's the other reason that climate change matters. So how can you help? Everyone can absolutely make a difference. So easy ways are sometimes the best ways because we can all commit to a couple of things. Turn off the lights. Um, if we were sitting in this room long enough, my lights would actually go off automatically. So at Ecos, all of our lights are on automatic timers. And I'll usually laugh if I'm sitting in a meeting long enough and I'm not moving enough, the lights go off and people think they've lost me, but it's just because we're on sensors here. But at home, you can turn off the lights every time you're not using them. You can buy less plastic. You can start looking for things like our laundry sheets that don't have plastic at all and think about the plastic that you purchase. You can also trade toys, clothes. Instead of buying something new, maybe you can trade instead. That's a great way to reduce your carbon footprint. Planting a veggie garden or some trees is a really good way to help the planet. That really helps take in CO2 and create oxygen. It's a really smart thing to do. You can also bike or walk with your parents to school. That's an easy way to get less carbon usage with fuel. And you can take shorter showers. I challenge you to see how quick you can be. Um, I, I know there's timers out there. You can get little timers so that you can take a five minute shower and donate items when you're done with them. So there's so many other ways um, you can be on a mission to save frogs like our friend Justin or impact communities through art, but there's also everyday little acts. And that's what we believe at Ecos is important is there's no act that's too small to make a difference. So thank you guys for having me this morning. If you ever want to touch base or um, talk about climate, you can always reach me. My name is Jenna and my email is Jenna at Ecos. So it was really nice to meet you guys. I wish I was there in Jersey. Uh, I used to live uh, in New Jersey and work out of the very factory that some of you are sitting in right now. So thanks for having me. Jen, everybody's clapping for you here in Parsippany and I know around the world. Uh, what great tips um, really were. We're so inspired by all the work that you all do here at Ecos. And where the, I know that the group here in New York is very excited to get on with their Make a Difference Day so that they can have the tour of the facility and do all kinds of cool things. Um, I want to thank you. I want to thank um, Sonia and Liz and, um, and uh, Christine and everyone here who's with us today. And of course, Kelly Vlahakis Hanks, CEO in, in California, and Amber, and everyone at Ecos for being such a valued partner of the Lagumi Foundation. Um, thank you to all of the kids uh, around the world. We just started last month our Lukumi Good Deed Council with 10 schools around the world. Uh, we have one of the principals with us here today from Our Lady of Grace School in the Bronx. Rich Helmrich is here um, with us representing the school. We also have a school in, in Lake Como, Italy, Athens, Greece, Newfoundland, Canada, and Gander, uh, uh, Mayaguez, Puerto Rico, Indoor, India, uh, Zanzibar, Tanzania, um, and of course, New York and Los Angeles with schools to follow in Ireland, the United Kingdom, Germany, Ecuador, and the Philippines. 
Um, and these kids are on this good deed council are going to be speaking once a month. They already had two sessions where they're coming up with global good deed projects together to help everything, including uh, the environment. A lot of things that you talked about, Jenna. So thank you to all the kids around the world. Um, quickly, a thank you to Sofia Benitez, uh, who's helped uh, with so much of the planning for today and to our board and to all the kids around the world. We've really um, enjoyed being with you today. Um, as you heard today, find your purpose, make a difference for something you're passionate about, uh, and go out there and change the world one good deed at a time, starting with today. So thank you, everyone. Have a great day, and we will see you soon. Take care.